I got to speak to the developers of Hytale live on stream and they gave us a breakdown of what we can expect to see in 2024. Starting with the team finally opening up about something called hashtag Ask Hytale. I officially have John's blessing to announce a fun thing that we're going to start like very early next year, like starting January. I want you all to send your questions on Twitter and use that hashtag and then I'm going to chase down team members to answer that stuff. So, you know, stuff like, it, it, was it Lynn who's always asking about the cosmetic mask? Yeah. Stuff like that, yeah. uh, you know, weapons and, and magic and cool things. And I'll then I'll chase down various people on the team and I'll get it answered and it'll be really fun. This is their way of making more official statements about the game on social media. And that is significant because it means that they're actually opening up their doors to the players again. I mean, nothing says we want you to come and ask about the game more than a hashtag specifically dedicated to that very thing. So this is great news. Throughout the second half of 2023, game director John Hendricks and community manager Buddhacat really ramped up community interaction with all sorts of tweets about the game features and development teasers, which we've been covering on this channel. They are going to be using hashtag Ask Hytale, however, to answer questions in much more detail, spotlighting them and bringing quotes forward from different departments and team members who are there today working on Hytale itself. The hashtag is already filling up with questions and was even trending at at one point. Hytale's game director, John Hendricks, as I mentioned before, even joined in fueling the hype, announcing that the first minigame had been playtested in the new engine and that it was a parkour map. The test was internal and studio-wide with checkpoints and a leaderboard. I bet it's good to be able to play Hytale. I think that we're all hoping to test that too one day. During the stream, we also spoke to team member Chris Thurston, who you may remember hosted the Hytale showcase at EGX back in 2019. He has now become narrative lead behind Hytale and master of the game's lore. Throughout our live chat, he revealed that the Dagger Pigeon, which has become a meme in the community over the years, began as him simply messing around with another team member. An example of how easily one can produce iconic moments in the game. Being the one person who probably knows more about the lore behind Hytale than anyone, Chris had a few things to reveal. For one, he stated that Hytale is, as we've said on this channel many times, not just a game, but more of a universe. The adventure mode, the world of Orbis that we've heard so much about, is just one example of what can be created within the engine. In fact, they've designed everything with the mindset that this world will be taken by the community and built upon. Entirely new worlds will be crafted within the universe or engine of Hytale itself. A year or so back, they actually defined Hytale as three doors, creative, online, and adventure. You have the creative tools and more customizable style of play. Then there's multiplayer servers and mini games with other players. And thirdly, there's adventure mode, the story campaign or quote unquote vanilla survival world that you can spawn in, which again is just one world, an example of what can be made using the creative tools we just mentioned, and then perhaps getting together with other players online to create your own custom world, your own Orbis adventure mode, using those other two styles of play creative and online to forge your own experience. Chris reminded us that a key point of that diagram that they presented was the moment where those three doors become one, which is actually what the narrative they're writing for Hytale is trying to do. It's trying to combine all three into one cohesive thread. I think it's actually really cool that they're essentially giving lore to the entire engine, not just their adventure mode. Night clap. <laughs> The story of Hytale itself is about creativity. That's one of the core themes of the game fundamentally. We have players who in universe are called avatars. These are powerful beings. Their power being the creative tools that we no doubt get with Hytale. Things like the model maker, animator, and ability to customize worlds. These powerful beings, these avatars can travel the universe of Hytale, which is the engine. All of these avatars congregate at the capital, which is the large hub section of Hytale Online that was recently revealed, and they can create their own worlds using these creative tools, their powers. These worlds in turn being controlled and customized or even visited under specific conditions. For example, Orbis is one of these player-made worlds. It's created by Gaia, who is apparently an avatar, and we are put under specific conditions being the survival nature of adventure mode. 
We may be a powerful avatar, but in Orbis we are limited, much like we may be limited when visiting other player worlds. Orbis is Hypixel's example of a world that can be created by avatars in this universe, aka by players in their engine. It all just flows so smoothly. When asked about magic, the team teased that all magic is a reflection of the caster's creative power. This could mean that magic from avatars is reflective of how capable they are of using the engine's tools like the model maker and customizable setting. But it could also mean that the actual visual magic itself is reflective of the caster's emotional state or their personality. This may be why we see the kind and caring Gaia surrounded by magic that is very heavenly in nature, whereas the evil antagonist Varen exudes purple, toxic clouds. Maybe we as avatars will be able to dictate what our magic looks like, whether it's good or bad, or maybe elemental in its theme. The capital itself, which we still have yet to truly see, will supposedly be a reflection of all avatar creativity. Whether that means the community will be able to build within or on top of it, or maybe just showcase their own worlds and creations remains to be seen, but I for one am extremely excited about this environment. Chris reassured us that they have a constant focus on things like modding, which is extremely important and at the forefront of many decisions his team and the rest of the departments make. People taking different spins and interpretations on the canon, on the story elements of Orbis is exactly what the team look forward to and aim to facilitate. Due to this guiding principle, and especially with time to revisit the lore whilst the engine was being redeveloped, the team decided to double down on the most essential aspects of the narrative. They chose what really worked and cut things that they had planned that may no longer have fit their vision. I actually think this clarifies what many people were worrying about. They're aware of feature creep and are aiming to reduce scope in certain areas, opting for quality over quantity. And whilst this may come at the cost of cutting five-year-old concept art of maybe lesser known factions like the Fawns or areas that feel like they weren't worth exploring and didn't add to the immersion of the game, the team are set on presenting their perfect vision of what a world can be using Hytale's tools. And that can't be something that they spend an entire decade on mass producing, they need to create something attainable and substantive, rather than millions of assets cobbled together loosely that would basically be impossible to practically maintain at a consistent quality, especially when scaling the game with updates, is going to inspire way more players. It's showing them that it is something achievable, it's something that can be done. John Hendricks tweeted that he watched my last video and wanted to clarify my statement that they had partnered with Riot Forge to redevelop the engine. It turns out they actually partnered with The Forge, which is a completely separate entity, my bad. This team did assist, but have now passed the engine back off to the Hytale team, only being involved as needed. John also mentioned that the team's use of the terms pre-production and production, especially in the last blog post, can be a bit misleading. This is because they only want to officially give themselves production status when they are in the new engine fully end-to-end -end on a workflow, which means they have to have the whole team onboarded into it, and is unfortunately a bit of a harsh definition, as of course we know they've been producing content and experiences for Hytale for years now. It's just not been to such a strict criteria, as this is what we are going to have definitively on release. Now they've got that, and being strict has kept them honest and stopped them from making any false promises for the last few years. Of course, even I had expressed concern at the possibility of the team now only just entering production, but that is likely more of a formality for what it means to be fully in the new engine, as John said. We of course know that they had definitely been producing content for years on the legacy engine. We've literally seen hundreds and hundreds of assets. All that work is now likely just being ported over as the whole team is onboarded, and hopefully that quells any concerns or worry that you guys may have. When questioned about a rumor of a possible trailer dropping in the coming month, which by the way, I have no idea where that came from. I hadn't even heard there was a rumor. John quickly answered that we will actually see new in-engine images and footage way before we get a new trailer, highlighting that both are actually on the horizon there. I mean, we know GTA 6 just blew the Hytale trailer's view count out of the water in December, and one user even asked the team if they had made plans around GTA 6's release, or considered if that game will affect how successful Hytale will be, which of course John assured that they aren't worried about. There's more than enough room for both games of course, and I couldn't agree more, Minecraft and GTA 5 shared plenty of success, as did Roblox and Fortnite. 
In fact, all of the games that I just listed share success right now. I also believe that had the Hytale trailer released, say, this year, it would have just naturally got a lot more views. There are more people online. Things go viral and are circulated far quicker than they were five years ago. But of course, it doesn't hold a stick to GTA 6 in regards to the global awareness of that brand. It really is impressive, and I'm in no way saying that a new Hytale trailer could get the same number of views. Of course, they're uncomparable. But I wouldn't be surprised if a second trailer beat the original. Speaking of the future, John actually alluded to the future because he got a tattoo related to Hytale, featuring Gaia, the god of Orbis, as well as a Feren warrior, which is an NPC faction we know as John's favorite, and a number of elemental golems. These are creatures that represent the different types of magic in Orbis, earth, ice, wind, and so forth. There's also a large sword and a whole portion of the image that John had to censor because it contains spoilers for the game. I imagine this is a mob or character that is yet to be revealed, but it's nice to know that if you ever bump into John, you may catch a glimpse of it. Also, shout out to this really odd wave of Hytale tattoos recently. That's like two now, and I wonder if there's going to be any more. Hytale's engine was next up to be discussed when one user questioned how big is Hytale when compared to the trailer released in 2018, and John said he liked the answer of infinite. They know that in presenting infinite possibilities, they need to demonstrate just how many options there are, how many configurations of world the Hytale engine is capable of, and thus there is a huge focus on what they build first. The trailer was really only showcasing a vision that was the tip of a very large iceberg, most of which has now been charted since then, so the team can be very confident in their next steps. In fact, when asked which area of the game he's most satisfied with right now, John said world generation because it just keeps getting better. It's full of little moments where you come across something new and immediately start planning and scheming. When asked whether we will ever get to play the older version of the game that was originally shown way back in the trailer, John said that unfortunately it's unlikely and that it will probably be archived, but that they will talk lots more about it in the future. They want to share a lot about their journey and perhaps even make a documentary on their history of development, which I for one would love front row seats to. There were also people worried that the game may look different with the new engine, and so the team stressed that they liked the look of Hytale, and so you don't need to expect a huge visual change. If anything, it now feels more Hytale than before, at least as far as the modeling, texturing, and UI goes. I for one think it's really good to see the team opening up and being this transparent about not just where they're at, but where they're planning to be by the end of 2024. With hashtag Ask Hytale starting up this month, along with the team being onboarded to the new engine and with it being finalized over the start of this year, we may be looking at that in-engine reveal, some new gameplay footage for the first time in two years, sooner than we thought, followed by a whole host of content after that, as the team mentioned. I mean, we'll very likely get regular blog posts again once the team can reveal the engine. This is because now anything that they show in blog posts will be representative of the final product. It won't be like false advertising. I'm not saying that the previous blog posts were, but obviously that was using a legacy engine and they've come a long way in the few years since then. By the way, big shout out to the team and thank you to everyone who showed up to the Hytale charity live stream that we hosted last month. Over 40 creators worked on content for this stream, which is absolutely incredible. We were able to raise $11,000 across nine hours, bringing our total across the four years of running this fan event to $38,000, which is absolutely mind blowing. Genuinely, I'm amazed that this community just continues to persist and the developers showing up to support us made all the difference as well. It was hugely appreciated and it was great to see that we made Buddha and the rest of the team proud. Subscribe for more Hytale updates throughout the rest of this year, stay safe and keep free.